All right, welcome back to Huddle Up, Luca. We finally made it. The CFL season is here. It's been a long six months of the off season, but I'm absolutely so excited to be watching some CFL football this week. How are you, man? I'm great. Montreal and Winnipeg, a rematch of the Grey Cup, going to kick off the season for us. We've got some big news this week about the Grey Cup halftime show, which we're really excited about, as you know, Jonas Brothers. Everything in between, though, and getting to that point is going to be amazing, and we can't start anywhere other than week one. A week ago on Huddle Up, we ranked every single team in the CFL via a tier list, but today's preview show is going to be a little bit different. We got a bunch of different questions um, about the season, some things to expect, and we are going to answer them. We will start with one of the favorites every year. One of the best parts about the CFL is that anyone can win year in and year out, so we'll start off with the biggest sleeper of the 2024 season. Luca, who do you got? I've got the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and this really hinges on Trevor Harris's health. He's looked great in the preseason so far. You're hoping to see that health sustained throughout the regular season, something he hasn't really been able to do in the past with Saskatchewan, and obviously not a fault of his own. Injuries happen. It's football, um, but they need him to be the biggest piece of their offense because their offense can really be electric up there with BC and Winnipeg, I think, and it's because of the receiving core they have. They've got three guys that can go for a thousand Keon Schaefer Baker Sean Bain Jr. and Samuel Emelis Canadian receiver and I think it's giving Riders fans kind of flashbacks to the Canadian Air Force of Rob Bag, Chris Getzlaff and Andy Fantuz and you got to mention Weston Dressler in that bunch as well they led them to Grey Cup wins they were exciting to watch on offense and I think that these three receivers specifically have that talent to carry this team. There are questions on the defensive side of the ball, but they brought in the Argos defensive coordinator, Corey Mace, as their head coach. First year, year one, but he is going to make his mark on this team early on, and I'm excited to see what it looks like in their identity under him. So that's why I think they're a bit of a a slept-on team. And the CFL is always better when the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are a good team. Such a passionate fan base. And honestly, it was kind of tough to watch how their season ended in the back half after Trevor Harris went down a year ago. I'm going to stick in the West Division for my sleeper, though. And I want to talk about the Edmonton Elks. Everyone's favorite team to poke fun at a year ago. Um, Really, really rough start to the season where at one point it looked like, were they even going to win a game? Trey Ford steps in and they go on this magical back half of the season run where I remember we made a video like, are they going to make the playoffs? The turnaround was great and there was a lot of optimism in Edmonton. And now this year, things look even more different because they brought him a cloud Bethel Thompson, a move that I think shocked a lot of people, but has now grown on a lot of people. And I think having this two quarterback system, regardless of how they roll them out, it's going to be very, very effective. And they just have a very high powered offense. And I think that in terms of when you're looking at the grand scheme of the CFL, they are going to be a very, very fun and exciting team to watch. I think the, the Curly Gittin straight in particular is one that is really, really going to work. And when you got Geno Lewis there as well, we all know what he can do when you get the ball in his hands. So Edmonton Elks, for me, the ultimate sleeper going into the 2024 CFL season. I expect them to make the playoffs and even maybe ruffle some feathers once they Ooh, get there. A little preview of what's to come. Okay, the next category we want to go over. Biggest question mark for this season. I think with this one, you have to start with the Toronto Argonauts. Obviously, the uncertainty at the quarterback position. How is Cameron Dukes going to do filling in? Or is it going to be Nick Arbuckle? We don't really quite know what they're going to look like on the offensive side of the ball. And then defensively, you mentioned when you were talking about Saskatchewan, losing Corey Mace. I think that is going to be a big, big loss. And it's also just the turnover that they've seen on this roster. That lack of continuity coming from their greatest season ever as a franchise going into this year, where it's just been a very, very busy and noisy offseason. There's some new faces in the building. The Argos, to me, are just one big question mark. How are they going to respond? Can they hit the heights that they hit a year ago? I'm not quite sure. The East Division kind of feels like it's anyone's game at this point. But with the Argos, I kind of need to see it before I believe it heading into the season. I'm going to stick in the East with my biggest question mark as well. And for me, it's Bo Levi Mitchell. What Bo Levi Mitchell are we going to get for Hamilton? Seems healthy right now, which is obviously the biggest thing with him. But he hasn't thrown for over 20 touchdowns in a year since 2018. It's been a long time since we've seen the MOP Bo Levi Mitchell, the guy that was challenging for that and winning that award every season, leading the Calgary Stampeders to the playoffs every season, winning Grey Cups. That's the version of Bo that the Hamilton Tiger Cats need to see and signed up for. 
just haven't had a chance. And I know it's only been one season. He dealt with injuries. But before that, too, the question in Calgary was, is Bo still the same guy that we once saw lead this team to Grey Cups? I'm not so sure, but I'm not counting out Mitchell as someone that can have that bounce back and resurgence. And I think the Tiger Cats are really well off offensively as far as their skill positions go. They've got a lot of great weapons that Bo can use to maybe bounce back. But if he doesn't, it might be a long year in Hamilton. That one-two punch of, of Tim White and, and James Butler, I don't know if there's a better wide receiver and starting running back sort of combo in the CFL. So, so there'll be a ton of fun to watch, but I do agree with you. The quarterback, it is a big question mark at this point. But Let's continue previewing with our breakout star for the 2024 CFL season. Where are you going with this one? This is always such a fun thing to predict going into the year. Who's going to be that one young player that emerges as one of the faces of the league? And I want to talk about one of the Philpop brothers, and it's not the one who had all the headlines a year ago. Obviously, Tyson catching the, the game-winning touchdown in the Grey Cup for the Alouettes. But it's his brother, Jalen Philpott of the Calgary Stampeders, has had some really, really unfortunate luck with injuries so far in his young career. But this was a guy who was taken actually before his brother in the 2022 draft. So he's got a lot to prove. And he's sitting in a situation where after Malik Henry went down mm-hmm. in Calgary, the Stampeders are just kind of begging for someone to come into a role and become a big, big reason why this team can be competitive in 2024. And I think Jalen Philpott can be that guy. He's a versatile player. He can do a lot for you on offense. And I'm just excited to see him with some more responsibility. If he can stay healthy in 2024, expect big things to come. And then we'll just be with this duo of siblings who are just dominating one in the East, one in the West. Um, but exciting times for the Philpot family, for sure. Tyson told us at Media Day that he's most looking forward to finally facing Calgary with his brother healthy and having that matchup for the first time. So that'll be one of the games we've got circled on our calendar. I'm going to go to Tyson's team, but not pick him for this, even though he seems like an intriguing player to pick out of all the receivers in Montreal who have the task of replacing Austin Mack's production. Mack led this team in so many categories last year and was a beast for them in the playoffs and the Grey Cup game. He's now in the NFL. I'm going to go with his teammate, though, Tyler Sneed, who maybe by stature you look at him and are like, yeah, he's not replacing Austin Max production as far as his physicality goes. But I think that he really did become this trusted target for Cody Fajardo all season long, had 800 yards nearly in his first CFL season, getting adjusted to the game still. But I think there are bigger and better things for Snead on the horizon as part of this Alouette's trio in the receiving core of him, Phil Pot, and Kayon Julian Grant, who also could fit this category had a great season last year before getting injured Um, but I like Snead and just his ability to run routes I think he really has become a trusted target for Cody Fajardo did so throughout the playoff run came up big for them in a lot of big moments during the regular season so I think his production is going to continue to soar and that's a really great rookie season to have 788 yards in your first year playing football in Canada only bigger and better things to come for Snead solid pick Um, But let's get into something where get ready to say something with your chest here. One guarantee, something that you are absolutely certain will happen in the 2024 season. What do you got? All good things must come to an end. And my guarantee is the Calgary Stampeders playoff streak of 18 consecutive seasons is going to come to an end. I'm sorry, Calgary fans. I don't feel good making this guarantee either, quite frankly, because last year we said this. During the season, no chance they make the playoffs. They were in a rough patch, and they still found a way to sneak in and make it 18 years in a row and continue the streak. Dave Dickinson at the helm. They haven't missed the playoffs since the days before Henry Burris. That's how long it's been. 2004, when they went 4-14. and I don't know if they're going to be that bad this year, but I think the West, like we've talked about in our sleepers category, has improved drastically, and I just think Calgary's the odd team out this year. Man, you have absolutely put a target on your back with your one <laughs> I know. Mine is way more positive <laughs> than that. I want to talk about the Ottawa Red Blacks because they made one of the most intriguing moves of the offseason going out and getting Drew Brown, a player that in limited usage in Winnipeg has put together some of the greatest quarterback numbers we've ever seen. Nine touchdowns, zero interceptions, and almost 100 passing attempts a year ago, nearly 1,000 passing yards and a completion percentage hovering right around 70%. Like, wow. Damn. If he can keep that production up, and it is a big 
if because his supporting cast in Ottawa isn't quite what it was in Winnipeg. But my big one guarantee is I'm not sure if the Ottawa Red Blacks are going to go on to make the playoffs. But if we're going to learn anything from this season with this team is that Drew Brown is going to establish himself as the future of this organization. He can be that franchise quarterback. And I do think maybe not to the level of if you want to talk numbers, because those are just quite frankly impossible to keep up what he was doing in Winnipeg. But I do think we will see a very, very strong season from Drew Brown. And he'll give that fan base a lot to look forward to. And maybe it's not this year where they get into the playoffs and compete for a great cup. But down the line, he can be that guy. I'm just very, very high on Drew Brown heading into the 2024 season. But let's get down to some individual awards. The award winners are always fun to predict. Um, whether guys are going to repeat on some big seasons last year or whether new guys are going to emerge. We'll start with the biggest award, the most outstanding player in the CFL. Luca, who do you have taking home that prestigious honor this season? I'm going to go with Vernon Adams Jr. of the BC Lions quarterback. I love watching him play. That offense he is so in command of is explosive, exciting, and he is... The engine that makes it all go. He distributes the ball so well to all of those amazing weapons at receiver. He uses his legs to not only run the ball, but create and extend plays. Great at throwing on the run. He's a great leader. He's fiery. He's emotional. He's athletic. He is exactly what I want my quarterback to be. I love watching him play. I root for him because he is the guy I want to root for. He is the type of player and person that I want to see succeed. So I want him to win this award for the first time in his career. And I think the BC Lions are going to be really, really good. So that helps. He's going to put up a ton of video game numbers. But there's some other guys that are really good too that might have a say about it. Yeah, VA is a really good shout though. Nearly 5,000 passing yards a year ago. A lot of people are predicting that he'll get there this year just with how high-powered that offense is, especially once you add in William Standback, which mm -hmm. I think will weirdly enough help his passing numbers, which is, is, is crazy to say. But I'm going to stick in the West Division. I'm going to go with the rival. I'm going to go Zach Kalaros. What can you say about him that hasn't been said already? I just think that this year, more than anything, is going to be more of a statement year, more of a I'm going to go out and prove everyone wrong year because – a lot of people seem to think that this Winnipeg team has seen their best days already and that that era of them dominating is slowly coming to an end. I don't think so. I think Kalaros is going to go out. He's going to connect with his trio of wide receivers and Dembski and Schoen and Kenny Lawler and Brady Oliveira is going to do his thing. I just really think he's going to put together a very, very dominant season and ultimately just narrowly edge out VA for this award, especially if the Bombers finish above the Lions in the standings, which I think could happen. It's going to be a great rivalry to watch between not only them two, but these two teams battling for that one seed in the West and home field advantage for the playoffs. If the Grey Cup runs through Vancouver, you know that place is going to be rocking for the entirety of their postseason. Let's move on to most outstanding defensive player. Great award. Obviously, the winner of it a year ago, Matthew Betts, cannot defend this title because he's gone over to the Detroit Lions. So I'm going to go in a completely different direction, and I'm going to head over to the Toronto Argonauts in the East Division. Pass rusher Flo Arimolade. It's his second year in Toronto. He had 10 sacks a year ago, and he's really emerged as their go-to pass rusher on defense. And I think the arrival of Jake Ceresna will draw more attention to him as well, which will open up more things for Flo. And another part of the reason of why I predict him to win this award is he just has the best sack celebration oh in the entire CFL, the signing of the artwork. I think we'll see plenty of that this year. So I'm going to go with Flo Orimolade as my most outstanding defensive player. It's a great pick. I'm going to go a little bolder because the defensive back hasn't won this award since 2011, Javon Johnson of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I'm going to go with the Canadian as well, Mark antoine Ducroix. We all, I think, have that highlight of him picking off Chad Kelly and returning it in the East final ingrained in our brains but he had such an outstanding season for Montreal last year five interceptions few forced fumbles a couple of touchdowns he makes an impact in so many ways as a safety and I think those numbers are only going to increase maybe the touchdowns kind of come down a little bit because 
that is more luck based than anything as far as that being able to be carried over season to season but I don't think the interceptions are going to stop he plays that middle of the field so well impacts the game in so many ways and a lot of his interceptions too are near the line of scrimmage as that one was against Toronto he's a game changer I love it and I think he's going to win defensive player of the year I would just love to hear his speech when oh he wins that award too because of how fiery he was when the Alouettes had won the great cup um, but let's stick with Canadians and let's predict our most outstanding Canadian. Brady Oliveira obviously ran away with that award a year ago with such a great season. Is he going to go back to back? It's going to be tough to challenge him. That workload, what he's able to do as a player, like he's the best running back in the league. So I, I think it's going to be tough, but I'll go with Sam Emelis. We talked about him a little bit of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders wide receiver. The only thing working against him is just how good that offense is as far as having two other really solid options in Schaefer Baker and Sean Bain Jr. But Emelis came in his own last year as a receiver for this team and a consistent option when all things were inconsistent around him as far as quarterback play goes. Finished top 10 in receiving yards, had a handful of touchdowns, I think, He's only going to improve. He's still so young. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he does as an encore this year with Trevor Harris. I think Emelis' time will come eventually, but I sat beside Brady Oliveira for about five minutes at media day, and I just don't know how I'm going to tackle him. <laughs> so I'm going to pick Brady Oliveira to win the award once again. Um, and to conclude, let's talk special teams because it's such an important part of the game. Javon Leak won that with Toronto Argonauts a year ago. He's no longer with the team. He is now with the Edmonton Elks. Who are you taking to win most outstanding special teamer? I'm going to go with another Alouette, James Letcher Jr. We saw him come on late in the season after Chandler Worthy got hurt. He's been given even more opportunities this year in training camp to be the kick returner, the punt returner. He's dynamic, electric. Saw it in the East final against the Argos where he changed that game for Montreal in a big way. I think this Montreal team is absolutely loaded, and he's another weapon, not only in the special teams game, but maybe in the receiving game as well. Who yeah, are you going with? He's got a he's got a lot of fire in his game. He's almost he's almost like a, playing a video game. The way he moves with the ball, he's just so so tough to tackle. He already said he's gonna win special teams player of the year and wants to break the record for return touchdowns in a year. Like he's got the confidence. Another guy who I'm going to pick who I think has that sort of confidence and swagger that you want in a returner is Mario Alford. A little bit more experienced. I believe he's 30 years old now. Um, so it's it's time for him to go out and get his crown because he is such, such a dynamic player. And uh, he's going to be a big part of that reason why the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are back in the playoffs in 2024. No better way to close the show than going over our Grey Cup prediction Let's go. Who you got? Well, I can't do any worse than I did last year. I don't know if you remember who I picked a year ago. I, I thought the Tiger Cats were going to win on home soil. So not a great track record. <laughs> um, I would love to pick the BC Lions once again to win on, on home soil. I'm not going to do that, though. Okay. I'm going to stick with the theme. I picked Zach Claros to win most outstanding player. I picked Brady Oliveira to win most outstanding Canadian. I'm going to say the Winnipeg Blue Bombers get there again. But this time, different than the last two years, they get it done um, and they cement what has just been a phenomenal, phenomenal run of dominance in the CFL. But facing them, I think we're in for a treat, something we haven't seen before. I think we're going to see a crossover team in the West do the unthinkable. I'm really torn between it being Saskatchewan and it being Edmonton. I'm going to roll with experience in this one, and I'm going to say that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are the fourth place team in the West. And their record is better than whoever is third in the East. They cross over and they win the entire East Division. They meet the Blue Bombers in the Grey Cup. But ultimately, the Cinderella run comes to an end. And they lose to the almighty Winnipeg Blue Bombers. How's that for a prediction? That's as bold as you can get. It's never happened before since the crossover game came into effect. I feel like we've been close a couple of times with some Edmonton teams when they went to Ottawa when Henry Burris was there. And those were some great battles. But... Wow, I love it. I would love to see it. I'm not going to predict it. I'm going to predict the BC Lions winning at home over the Montreal Alouettes. I think Montreal just gets back there, but this time they lose. And BC winning on home soil, like you said, CFL champions, Grey Cup champions. They haven't won it since they won it on home soil when Travis Lule was their quarterback. So I think Vernon Adams Jr. cements himself as a BC legend by bringing another Grey Cup to Vancouver going to be exciting it's also going to be exciting because we got the jonas brothers bringing the house down in bc place come gray cup um so i gotta ask you what song are they going to come out rocking with 
It's the toughest question of the day, to be honest. Yeah. I feel confident in my CFL picks more so than I do that, which I, I don't think is a good thing. I'm going to go with Sucker. It's a banger. I would love to hear that guitar. Just that that start of that song would get me so fired up. Give me that. Give me Sucker. I think when you're approaching breaking down and trying to analyze these halftime shows, bands like the Jonas Brothers, I think you got to key in on nostalgia. And I think if you come mm. out with Burning Up, just the first couple notes of that song, get the crowd going. Um, I think it's going to eclipse whatever 50 Cent brings to BC. I think I think this is going to be even better at the Great Cup, the biggest stage possible. And if the Lions are playing there, even better. Um, I'm excited for the Jonas Brothers. I'm excited for the CFL season. And I'm excited to see how these predictions age down the stretch. Because hopefully they're better than last year. But uh, thanks once again for joining us here on Huddle Up. We hope it's going to be a great season. And we'll see you again soon.